Hey y'all, it's me, Serena. If you want to see how I go from this to this, then keep watching. Hey y'all, it's me, Serena. Thank you for stopping by today. I have to say this video is a little bit or a lot vulnerable for me because you guys always see me, you know, in my videos, I got my hair done, I've got makeup on, I look a certain way, but a lot of you have asked me to do a hair and makeup tutorial. So that's what I'm here to do for you today. Let's get straight into it. So I just got out of the shower and got dressed and took my hair down out of the towel. And as you can see, this is my hair texture. My hair is wavy, but not curly. Um, and it has more curl on this side than this side. So it just has a mind of its own. And my hair never looks the same two days twice, which, you know, is an extra challenge. But I'm gonna show you what I do. And I do have some damage in my hair. My hair is getting drier by the day, as is my skin. And, um, and I do have some heat damage from using too many styling products and um, drying my hair too much, washing and drying it too much. So I'm trying to be kinder to my hair. And um, first I want to show you the shampoo and conditioner products I'm using on my hair. And all of these products will be linked down below if you would like to order them. Um, I'll have everything linked for your shopping uh, ease. So the main two things I'm using right now, these are a couple of products by Amica. This, they're, it's by a line called The Cure, and it's the Bond Repair Shampoo and Bond Repair Conditioner. This stuff smells amazing, and, um, and it is a bond repairing system. And I actually got this through my FabFitFun box. It came in that, and I have absolutely loved it. And I love it so much, I'm going to keep using it even after this uh, runs out. And this is a great conditioner, but my hairdresser told me to use um, a deep conditioning mask. And she said, you can use it as often as you wash your hair. And I was afraid that I would weigh my hair down. Uh, but she said, no, go for it. Um, just don't wash your hair as much, which is what I've been trying to do. And the, uh, the mask or, or extreme conditioner I'm using is this one by Redken. And it's called the Extreme Mask. And I can't read anything else because I don't have my glasses on. So those are the products I'm using to uh, wash and condition my hair. Next, um, after I towel dry it, I don't really do anything to it, just kind of rake my fingers through it to kind of set up a part right there. And um, the first step is a leave-in conditioner. This is also by Redken. This is the Acidic Performing Concentrate. And it is a leave-in deep conditioner and also a heat protectant. So, and I use a good bit of this, so. There is that first squeeze, and I'm going to rub it between my hands really well, and then I'm going to start distributing that. I don't put it up at the scalp. Don't need it up there. I'm focusing on the ends, and especially around my face where I have the most amount of damage. So I rake that through. <clears throat> and then scrunch it back up some. And I have my big mirror over here. So if I look over there every so often, that, that's why, because it's hard to see everything just in my camera view. And then I squeeze out another big, or not big, dime-sized dollop of it. And I go over to this side. So I think I've got that distributed through the bottom half of my hair. And if any is left, I just kind of rub it on the rest of my head. Then I go in for a little bit of volume. I found this at Walmart and this stuff smells like a pina colada. It is by OGX and it's called Coconut Curls. This is the decadent decadent creamy mousse 
So it's a mousse, but it's made like a cream. So it's not gonna make your hair crunchy or anything at all. So I give that a good shake and I start out with a small amount because you can always add more, but you can't take it away if you put in too much. I mean, I just start with a little bit like that. And you're gonna see me put a lot of product in my hair, but you know, that's the mistake that most people make is they're not using enough of the right kind of product. So I always start in the back. That's a secret I learned a long time ago. Start in the back and then work it forward because you don't want a big glob of product right in the front of your hair. And next from the same line, OGX Coconut Curls, this is called the Air Dry Cream. And this y'all smells delicious. And I just do one pump. We're gonna start with that, rub it in my hands. Mm, and it smells amazing. And then I'm going to go through and start scrunching it again. And I've used up all this on the sides of my head, so I'm gonna do about another half a pump for the back of my head. So there is all the product in my hair. Now, I do need to do something to get a little bit of lift here on top. So I take about three of these, whoop, I got a hair on my hand about three of these little clips and I'm gonna have to look in my mirror to do this. I go in and just kind of lift it up off the scalp like that and I do it right here around my part and that is just to give a little bit of lift right there. My face is very round and I need a little bit of height here on top of my head so that's what I do for that. So there we go. Aren't I lovely? So once I've done all this, my hair smells amazing. I've got it scrunched up. I'm going to let this air dry while I do my makeup. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, it is time for my makeup. And I know the angle is a little bit difficult in here. It's just what I'm working with here in my bathroom. I'll kind of show you what's going on. So our vanity is over there. Over here, I have a whole vanity area. I showed you guys this in a previous video. I did a little tour of my vanity and makeup storage. And I have my big mirror here. And above that mirror is a window. So I do get good natural light in here, but it may be causing some weird shadows or glare. And for that, I apologize. And also, I've got my lighted mirror with the magnifying side right here on my vanity so i may have to look this way to do some of my makeup i'll be sure to show you what i'm doing but i'll have to actually look in this mirror to do it so i already have my moisturizer on i put my moisturizer on before i start that whole um, hair process so that it can uh, soak into my skin and set and get out of the way before I do anything else. And for daytime, um, I'm using the CeraVe um, AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. It's got a broad spectrum SPF. So I've put that on my face and I've also used the CeraVe um, I repair cream. So I put that around my eyes and I've moisturized. So now we're ready for the makeup process. So the first step is primer and you guys have seen this before. It's my NYX Marshmallow Primer. This is the one I use with a more matte finish makeup which is what I'm using today. I'm using the Lancome Tint Edole. So I will be using this. This give, gives a little bit more of a dewy finish. And I'll just use one pump and rub that between my fingers. And I make sure to get my nose to get all these big pores and pores on my cheeks. And between my eyes, I have a scar from shingles right here between my eyes. 
so that does help to fill that in a little bit. Now for the foundation, um, what I usually do is I start with one pump and I just pump it out on the back of my hand here. And um, I'm using this right now in the color Buff Neutral 215. So that's what I start with. And typically I start with my foundation and I do my concealer after the foundation. So I'm going to get this started and then speed it up. But what I do, I just start dotting and then I smear it around a little bit. And then I have my very damp beauty blender and I start blending. And I'm gonna do this all over my face. Okay, I'm gonna turn around so you can get a little bit better look here at my face without the shadows. So here I am with the foundation. Now I'm going to go in with some concealer. So for my concealer, I use the same Lancome Tint Edol Ultra Wear concealer and it's the same shade as my uh, foundation. Now this, I tell you, a tiny bit goes a long way. You can use it very sparingly because it covers incredibly well. So start with a small amount. You can always build up from there. But I'm going to do my under eyes. I'm going to hit that little zit on my nose and any other areas I see that need a little extra help. So after I've done that, you can tell the difference between this eye and this eye. I go in with my Damp Beauty Blender and just make sure it's all blended out. And now I'm going to do this eye. Okay, there you go. That is both sides done. I know you can see my uh, face does look lighter than my neck and my chest. Um, my neck and chest always tends to look kind of flushed. But uh, by the time I get done with my bronzer and blush and everything, it's all going to blend in fine. So, all right, next steps. Okay, now it's time for powder. And my favorite powder, and it has been my favorite for a long time, is um, this Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. And the color that I use is number 10, Fair Light. I think they have one lighter than this. It's just called Translucent, but this works for me. And what I do, I just um, dump some out into the lid. My loose powder, I just use an angled powder brush. This one is by e.l.f. You know, you can get these at Walmart very inexpensively or Target. Same deal. I'm just tapping it down into the lid and then I tap off the excess. And then I'm just going to start on my forehead and I'm just going to kind of swirl it around. And I tell how I, I can tell how much powder is the right amount by feeling my face. If my face still feels tacky, um, then I know I need a little bit more. But the, and I don't want to put too much on because then it's going to start to look cakey. I want just enough to set my foundation, but not so much that it's going to be cakey. That's why I tap off so much. And this feels good. It doesn't feel super powdery or dry, but it's not. Um, tacky either so I know that is the right amount for me. Next we're going to add some color and warmth with my bronzer. This is how I get away with using a lighter um, foundation. I really depend on my bronzers to adjust depending on what uh, 
what time of year it is and how much color I have. So the bronzer I use is this Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. This is in the color, it just says Deep Bronze, so I guess it's the dark one. Um, but I don't find it to be too dark. And what I apply this with is, this is an old Bare, Minimal, Bare Minerals brush as well. And I like it, and so that's what I use. And I just take it and swirl and then give it a good tap to get rid of that excess. I always start on my forehead and I just start up here around my hairline and I'm doing a circular motion. Can you see how that added some color? And then I'm gonna come down and do the same thing. I'm gonna get a little bit more on my brush and I'm gonna create myself some cheekbones since I don't really have any. <laughs> and then I'm gonna blend this out and also what, with what's left on the brush, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of color down here, I'm gonna hit my nose a little bit, and then just swirl this out and do some blending. So there we go. Now I've got some warmth and a little definition to my face. Now it's time for the blush. And I'm a huge fan of the Milani Baked Blush in the summer. I wear the color Luminoso a lot. It's a little bit more peachy and warm. Um, in the winter, when I tend to have a little bit cooler toned skin, um, I really like this color. It's called Dolce Pink. And I'll have all this listed down below too. And I use a small little brush. This is actually called a highlighting brush by e.l.f., but I use it for a blush brush. That way, you're not just spreading blush all over your face. You can pinpoint it a little bit more precisely, and that's what I like about it. So again, I just swirl, tap, and I start. I don't come all the way down on the apples of my cheeks, but I do just a little bit along the top of my uh, bronzer, and then I mix it with my bronzer and swirl up. And if that is too much, which often it is, I keep a clean, a big fluffy brush. This is an old MAC powder brush. Um, I can put a little bit of powder on it if I need to, but I find I don't really need to. I just come in and, you know, kind of brush it and knock it down a little bit and blend. So none of this is very precise, as you can see. It's just what I do. All right, so that's pretty much it for adding color. Now it's time for eyes. For my eyes, you guys know I love my Profusion um, eyeshadow palettes. These are like $5. You can find them at Walmart, and they come in a ton of different shades. I've got three, and um, the Bare Mauve, and this one is called Smoky. And I'm going to use the Smoky palette today. And these are great. They're highly pigmented. Um, they do have a little bit of fallout, but not too much. And I just love them. So um, I'm going to do something just very neutral today to kind of show you what I do. Not anything over the top dramatic. So I'm going to be using these lighter colors and then this color over here on this end as my... Um, to create my crease and to really highlight my lash line and everything. But first, all over my, my lid, I'm gonna start with this one right here in the middle, which is, is just a really good neutral shade. And I have a whole set of these brushes. These are by Real Techniques. I really like their products. Um, and this was a whole makeup brush set that was all for eyes. So it has like everything you need for your eyes in one set. And I'll be sure to link it down below too. 
So I just get this nude, nudish color on this big brush and I swipe this all over my whole lid, bottom and top. And that is my base for my eyeshadow look. And now I'll do the other side. Very subtle, very neutral. Now I'm going to take this color right here. This is called Twinkle and it has a slight shimmer and I'm going to take my finger. I find this is the best way to do it rather than a brush. I'm just going to take some on my finger. And blend it on the inner third or inner half, I guess, of my eyelid. And that just adds a little pop and brightens it up a bit. Now, to add some definition to my eyes, I have very hooded eyes with, you know, my eyelids just completely disappear when I open my eyes, as you can see. So to get any kind of... Um, crease action going on when you have hooded eyes like I do, you really have to bring your eyeshadow up here to your brow bone. It has to be up here above the part. If you, if you just color in your crease down here when your eyes closed, then when you open your eye, you're not going to be, see, be able to see anything you just did. <clears throat> so this kit of brushes has this little angled brush that is fabulous. It's for uh, fabulous for placing eyeshadow. And now I'm going in with this darker shade down here on this end. It's called Nutmeg. And I am basically going to start way out here. I'm going to look like a clown, but I'm going to start out here and draw a line from up here down to the corner of my eyelash. See that? And I'm going to do it on the other side too. So now I have two stripes <laughs> on my eyes. Um, and actually this side needs a little more down here. Okay, now what am I going to do with this, you ask? Well, I'm going to take a blending brush and I'm just going to take this and start swirling it and blending it in toward the inner corner of my eye. And sometimes I do have to go back and add a little bit more just to, you know, even it out. But I have to do this and blend and take a step back and look at a distance like right now they're not equal at all so i'm going to have to clean this up a little bit you get the idea add more if you want or not that way when my eyes are open i still have this color above that crease to lift my eyes up and um, give me a little you know lift to my eye now for a little bit more definition, I don't use eyeliner for one thing, I stink at putting it on, and for another thing, I just feel like it looks kind of harsh on me. So this little brush kit comes with this brush, it's called a smudge brush, and I'm going to use that same color that I just put up in my crease. You could use a darker color, but I'm going to use the same color. And get some on that smudge brush and I'm just going to smudge some here along my upper lash line and on my lower lash line and there you go gives a little more definition to the eye without a harsh liner now I'm going to do a little cleanup on the corners I keep another one of these highlight brushes. Sometimes I use this for powdering certain areas, but I just keep one that's clean or that maybe it has a little bit of powder on it. And I'll look in the mirror and I'll go underneath and clean up any uh, fallout from the eyeshadow that's gotten down under my eyes. I just, you know, clean it out like that. And then I take a tissue 
and just kind of go like this up from the corner. To clean up anything that's fallen out down below. I don't do a lot with my eyebrows. They are a little bit thin right now just because I recently had them threaded and the lady went a little overboard out here on the ends. But I have pretty thick uh, brows and um, I fill them in because I do have some sparse spots and mainly to fill out on the edges. And I have some gray or white hair in my eyebrows so the hair is there <laughs> but you can't see it without coloring it in then i just go in with a little brow filling pencil this is the retractable brow pencil by wet and wild and it is in the color taupe and i just go in with some upward brush strokes and then fill in out here on the tail end of my brow All right, there we go. I know they're probably not perfect and even, but at least they're filled in a little bit. And this crayon um, is kind of waxy, so it does help the brows lay down a little bit too to give put them under control a little bit. Okay, next is my mascara. You guys know my favorite. It's the L'Oreal Air Volume Mascara. And I just get the blackest color that there is. I love the way this goes on. So there you can see with mascara, without. Huge difference. And I just put a little bit of mascara on the outer corners of my lower lashes. I don't put mascara on all my lower lashes. Again, trying to keep a more uplifted, um, brighter appearance and not so harsh with things under on the bottom of my eyes it's lip time you guys have seen this combo lots of times so you know what I'm gonna use I'm gonna go with my old faithful this is the L'Oreal color Riche matte lip liner in the color matte Stermind. I'm going to use it with the Bobbi Brown mascara mascara Bobby Brown lipstick in the color Cezanne Nude and top it with the Bobby Brown lip gloss in Free Spirit. And there you go. There is my complete makeup look. Now let's finish up the hair. Okay, now it's time to finish up hair. And the only tool I use when I wear my hair wavy or natural is uh, my hair dryer and it's nothing fancy this is the conair <laughs> sorry this is the conair infinity pro it came with um, an, a heat directing nozzle that goes on the end and also this diffuser so i'm going to use the diffuser and this one i like because it does have three different temperature settings for this look i put it on cool even on cool, there's a little bit of heat or warmth. I put it all the way on cool and I use it on low, not high blowing, just on low speed. And I'm going to go through my hair section by section and I'm just going to start, I'm going to kind of lean out and let the hair kind of collect in the diffuser like this and turn it on and then I'm going to turn it off and pull it away and the reason I'm turning it off and on even though that's kind of a pain is to create as little disruption to the, ha the hair and the surrounding hair as possible I don't want a lot of wind blowing around I'm just gonna come in blow it turn it off pull it out and keep doing that and I will be flipping my head over so you'll see that as well so here we go Okay, now you can kind of see how it's shaping up. It's looking a little bit crunchy, 
but I'm going to go ahead and take out these little clips. And see that just gave enough lift right here at along the part so that it's not flat on my head, but I need to dry a little bit where those clips were because they're still very damp inside where the, where the clips were. Okay, my hair is for the most part dry. It does still have some damp spots, but for purposes of wrapping up this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do next. So as you notice with this style, just wearing it kind of natural and wavy, I don't use any combs, any picks, any brushes, none of that. All I use is that diffuser and these hands. So next thing I do, I like to go up underneath. I try not to disturb the waves on the top layer, but I do like to go up underneath and just give it a good shake and uh, get it up off my head a little bit more. Flipping it upside down does help to do that, but I like to do it just a little bit more. And then you see that I do have a little bit of crunchiness going on and that is probably from being there being such a delay today between when I put the product in my hair and when I actually diffused it because usually I can do my makeup a lot quicker and I'm and I get to the diffusing quicker and it doesn't have a chance to get this crunchy before I've dried it but if this happens um, I do have a couple of different things to do and my favorite thing to do is this product right here this is the frizz ease secret weapon touch-up cream and this is by John Frieda you can get this at Walmart or Target or Ulta wherever I'll link it down below too and um, I like this because it doesn't make my hair greasy it keeps it shiny and it is a cream so it will soften your hair but it doesn't weigh it down or make it greasy or feel heavy and none of the products i've used today do that to my hair either they don't leave my hair greasy or feeling heavy so i just put a little pea size a large pea size amount of that on my hands and rub it together and then i'm going to as they say in the curly girl method i'm going to scrunch out the crunch so i've got this on my hand product on my hand and i'm just going to go around with it and scrunch out some of that crunchiness and really it's important to do this step when your hair is 100 percent dry so i'm not going to overdo it today because the more you mess with your hair while it's damp the more you're uh, likely to bring in frizz so just to show you that is what i do so here is the final product and like I said before my hair never looks the same way twice so if it looks a little bit different today than other days you've seen me like this you know I never know what my hair is going to do today is laying the way it decided to lay today so here you go And I'll zhuzh it up a little bit more when it's 100% dry. I usually go into my crown back here and put some, um, some of this. This is the Not Your Mother's Plump for Joy Dry Shampoo. I will add some of that back, back here and then go underneath that top layer of hair and tease it just a little bit with a very wide tooth comb or pick like this. Just lightly tease it to give it a little bit of height back there. Get it off just get it off my head so that's another great product that i use and i use this a lot on second day hair um another great product i have found to refresh this on the second day well the number one thing is just a spray bottle my hair isn't super duper thick and it's kind of fine so i can get away most of the time with just spray bottling it and getting it wet and another thing i found that's really good on day two hair to refresh the curls is this product by garnier fructis it's called the curl refresher and of course it is sulfate free it's called the reviving water and it is really good too for that day two hair to bring the curl back um, after you slept on it and flattened out spots and things like that so 
there you go. There is my routine to go from scary to not so scary. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you. And um, if you'd like to see more like this, just let me know. And until I see you in my next video, have a stylish and beautiful day. Bye-bye.